With Andy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the OTP with Titans head coach Brian Callahan, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. In the game of health coverage, Farm Bureau Health Plans is the MVP. Tennesseans have relied on their unmatched rates, coverage, and service for nearly 80 years. So let's roll. Head coach Brian Callahan, thanks so much for joining us on this Monday. I would say it's good to be here. It is good to be here. I do enjoy your company, so looking forward to talking about the game. Well, so today was your first Monday after a game as head coach. And so, you know, win or lose, you kind of have to figure out what this day is going to look like for your players, for your staff. Shoot, even with us as the media, you know, there's yep. going to be a routine. Every Monday is going to kind of look the same. Was your plan for establishing what this Monday after a game was going to be interrupted by what happened in Chicago? No, not at all. I think that um, the best teams and I think the best coaches I've been around find a way to manage their Mondays um, the most consistent as you can. And because every game is going to be filled with a handful of plays that uh, had you made them, you might win. Um, even if you do end up losing – those are still plays that could have lost you the game and or plays that could have won you the game. And so I think if you take that approach, there's a consistency in evaluating each win and loss with the same mentality is where do we have to get better? What did we do well? How do we keep doing that well? And then the mistakes that we made, were, the, were they critical? Did they lose us the game? And then how do we re avoid repeating those? And I've always found that riding the roller coaster during the season is is difficult, and when you when you're reactionary to every good and bad, um, I think your team feeds off that. And so my my intent, whether we were win and lose, was to be with the exact same demeanor as I always am. Um, the messaging was consistent and critical of of what we need to do better. But that's on in every phase on all sides, whether we win or lost the game, that's exactly how it should go. And so there should be a little bit of comfort in the consistency of it all that win, lose, or draw, we're, we're, we're being critical of our performance and where we could have been better. This is your Monday. Yeah. And it's going to be the Monday every single week. Either positively or negatively, were there surprises on the tape? Um, I think that I was, I was surprised when, you know, on the, the turnover was surprising. The, I thought I really thought on special teams I did not see that performance coming um I thought we've been we were excellent in the preseason I thought we were we've been fantastic in practice and so to see that in the in the moment was um, that was surprising I thought we'd be better than that um based on what I've seen and everything in the preseason and training camp and practice uh as far as the things that were good um it was really fun to, to see how far Tavondre Sweat has come um the the play that he put on the field uh, to get to see Harold and Jeff play uh, was great. They they lived up to the expectations that we had for them. They were both fantastic. Um, and to see our new secondary play together with Legarius and Cheeto and uh, Jarvis Brownlee mixed in there some and Roger and uh, Quandre and Hook, that was a fun group to see play together. And, and I thought our uh, rush and coverage really worked together well in, in the in the course of the game. Some of the challenges that you might have had on offensive line, were those more technique issues or were they assignment issues? Um, more technique than assignment. Uh, we were relatively well assigned throughout most of the game. We didn't have any major gla glaring errors in, in, in our down-by-down -down assignments. I think we had more technique misses and, and losses, and so that's going to happen. You're going to lose one-on-one -on -one in pass rush sometimes. It, it happens. We can live with that. How do we just fix the technique and see if we can get better. Um, so that, that's a little bit easier to live with when you're, when you're making some maybe more technical errors as opposed to schematic errors. Um, but yeah, I just think we didn't do a good enough job in pass protection overall. Uh, they won more than, than we did, I think when we needed to. And I think that part was, um, you know, contributed to, to the loss. Well, Levis made mistakes in the game and those have been documented. You mentioned in your press conference today, a reminder that, that was just his 10th start. He's still just in his second year. You're working with a young quarterback, which you have done in your very recent past in Cincinnati with Joe Burrow. How do you draw on that experience to be able to help Will in this moment? I draw a lot on that experience because it's, you know, unless you've had a, a high-profile young quarterback that you're trying to help learn how to play NFL football, that was a learning process for me at the time. And having gone through that, I feel much more equipped to help Will. And 
I've seen some of the things that that came up in the game that he's done that I can parallel with my experiences with Joe. Um, some of it being the the little bit of the reckless nature of of playing the quarterback position. It's different in the NFL. I think you saw Caleb Williams deal with the same thing on the other side. Um, that it's hard to get away from these pass rushers, and when they they connect with you, it hurts. And they connect with you, the ball comes out. And those are all things that. Um, that you have to learn, and there's no other way to teach that other than they have to experience it, and then you can teach from it. They have to know what that feels like, um, and it's not it's not an immediate process. It doesn't just happen overnight. They don't just, uh, oh yeah, no, I get it, coach, and then all of a sudden they never do it again. I mean, it's there. There's a there is a process involved in it, and, and I think we're well on our way, and it's going to keep. They're going to keep coaching it. Now, you mentioned special teams earlier, and I want to come back to that because there was some good stuff on the tape. There was some not-so-good stuff on the tape. How do you guard against overreacting both to the positive and to the negative as you evaluate that? Um, you have to work at that because sometimes you you can get emotionally hijacked a, a bit after a loss. Um, I try really hard not to let that happen. Um, but there's – as long as what we're doing in our process is right – and how we're preparing and what we're asking of guys to do, if that's right, uh, you lose you lose one-on-one sometimes. You lose a battle, which we did in the punt block. Um, and there's no an excuse for it, but there is a uh, – we don't just say, oh, this is not working, we've got to change everything. There's a, there's a balance there where something has to be corrected and we have to coach it, but it doesn't mean that – uh, the process is is bad, and I think when you get to the point where you feel like your process isn't good, then you have to look at how do we change all of that part of it. But week one, certainly not, um, and at no point, you know, do you just shelve everything you're doing because it, it you had a one poor game. So I think you, you stick with it. You have some consistency, and and generally the results come. NFL teams are defined through adversity. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this? part of the process of sort of creating the Tennessee Titans, knowing that a moment comes out of a disappointing loss like yesterday's? Yeah, that's the hope. You know, you you, you hope that your team is, is made of the right things. And I know from everything that I've dealt with with our team, we certainly are. And that part's encouraging to me. And that's what I told our team today is that I still expect the same energy, enthusiasm, to how hard they play. Nothing should change. We lost the game. We'll make the corrections. We'll move to the next one. And and there is a resilience factor uh, and an ability to overcome an adversity when you have that sort of approach where you have to keep finding ways to get better and you have to find ways to uh, not lose a game, which is we found a way to lose the game. We didn't find a way to win it. And learning how the, learning the difference and learning where, where could we have gotten better to have won that game as opposed to have lost it. And there's a part of that that you have to keep getting in those situations and you learn there's no better teacher than going through it. And there's a, we're young on offense, and there are a lot of young players, and so there's a lot of things that our, our players can stand to learn from a, a loss like that. Hey, Titans fans, celebrate each Titans win and enjoy the sweet taste of victory with a free donut at Kroger the very next day. Just download your digital coupon to score your free donut at any Kroger store. It's our way of saying thanks. Now let's be clear, it's one free donut per transaction while supplies last. Kroger, fresh for everyone and official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. We continue with Titans head coach Brian Callahan. Coach, as a player, as a coach, what is the key or the trick to carrying momentum from one half of a game to the second half of a game? I would guess it's more of a skill than people kind of give it credit mm-hmm. for. Uh, I do think momentum is a real thing. Um, I know that it's hard to quantify, but I think we all know it when we feel it. There's, We had a ton of momentum in the first half, and uh, to come out in the second half, and I, th- I thought we were really rolling and stuttered a little bit on the first offensive series, and then you give up the punt block for a touchdown, and that totally changes the, the feeling of, of the game. 
Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a mental focus I think that comes in at the end when games are in your favor, uh, on how do you, you have to learn how to keep a team on the mat. So when you knock a team, when you knock a guy down, you can't let him get up. Um, and, and we let, we let them get up and that's, that's a learned trait, I think, as a team, and there's a focus that's involved in it, and, and an, uh, um, an ability to not relax at any point or not take it for granted that you're in the position you're in. So uh, that comes with experience too. As a play caller, do you have to reestablish that rhythm in a second half? Yeah, and we we couldn't, we weren't able to do that on Sunday, and yes, there's a huge part of that that. Uh, we got knocked out of our rhythm. That we had a really good rhythm on those two touchdown drives that we scored, where we looked like I envisioned us looking a lot, and uh, we had a little bit more trouble in the second half. And that had to do with some penalties. Um, we got we got knocked back off off the game script a bit, and we had some third and longs, which is exactly what we didn't want to be in against that team in particular. Um, they do a really good job making life hard on the quarterback with their rush and their coverage is good. So we got it in spots that were a disadvantage to us. And I think that if we were able to have a little bit more continuity and flow of, of the down and distance, it might have helped us put one more scoring drive together that would have been enough to win the game. Let's talk about defense a little bit. What stood out to you about the way that side of the ball played on Sunday? Um, they they were everything that they have preached to be, which is which is exciting. They They played with toughness. They were aggressive. They played with some nastiness. There was something about the way that they played, and I think – that was really encouraging. I think there's still things that we can clean up on defense, and, and I don't mean to to rain on the parade of how well they played because they played well enough for us to win. And it, but you look back, and there's plenty of things that I think we could have done better uh, defensively as well. And against a different style of offense or a different quarterback, maybe some of those plays turn out differently. So there's always things to tighten up a little bit. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> but totally <that's>, acceptable <laughs> here, by the way. <laughs> um, but that's that. I think that's what what was, what was cool though is just to see that the the tenacity that they played with and the physicality they played with up front. I mean, th- that defensive line really made life hard on, on their offensive front. Amy asked you a question last week about were you any bit worried about your secondary being able to play as well together as you needed them to play based on the fact that they had not practiced together a lot? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think they answered that question. Were they even a little better in sync than maybe you had hoped? I think so. I, I think that there was – I was unsure of what that would look like, um, especially with guys that hadn't practiced a lot. You know, there's there's still a correlation between practice and playing. I mean, that doesn't go away. Um, so I was – internally had some concern about what that would look like, and um, they did a great job. And I think that it's more of a testament to who those guys are um, as players, the way they prepare, their pros. I mean, Cheeto and Legarius and – and Quandre, for that matter, as he got comfortable here, those guys are top-notch pros, and that I think I felt the difference in our defense. Is I felt the I felt the veteranness of our defense in that game. That when things weren't going right, they kept they kept coming back and they kept swinging, um, and they never got rattled by the game situation. And that's just a bunch of guys that have played a lot of football, um, and I thought that showed up on our defense too. And there's some things we got to clean up communication wise, but I think on a whole, that was a really, really good start for our secondary and the way that those guys played together. A lot of new guys in that secondary, but someone that we're very familiar with is Amani Hooker. What stood out to you about his play in Chicago? Uh, he made plays on the ball, which was a, which was a huge, a huge thing to see. I hadn't, you know, he hadn't had a lot of opportunity in the preseason, but um, he showed up in a big way. I think the scheme benefits him. I think he's shown why he's. Um, been a starting caliber player in this league for a while, and that that was good to see. And then you work him and Quandre together, and it was a good tandem. I think they they did a nice job of of passing things off, of of making sure the coverage was right. And again, we got things to clean up there too. But I thought as a for a first week with a bunch of new guys together, um, I thought they did a really good job. And I think what you, takes over is their professionalism, and, and Amani's the same way as those guys that they're just prepared and they're pros, and, and they know what to do and when to do it. Are you still hopeful that you could have Jamal Adams back for the Jets? Uh, I am, yes, I am, and uh, we'll see when we start practice Wednesday where he's at. But um, I, I was he was close last week, um, and so hopefully we're a, a few days closer, and, and hopefully he gets a chance to participate this week. All right, we've all wondered throughout the off season, especially if Tavondre Sweat played well, how other teams would choose to block Jeffrey Simmons. So as you reviewed the tape, how did they choose to block Simmons and 
dealing with sweat on the inside. Yeah, they, they did what most teams do, and they tried to get four hands on Jeff as much as they could, and that left uh, that left sweat with some one-on-one opportunities that I thought he took advantage of. I mean, he had a couple – uh, really nice rushes. You know, people don't look at him as a pass rusher necessarily, but he can. He's got quick hands and he's got quick feet for a man his size. And uh, he got he worked an edge a few times and and pushed the pocket and disrupted the quarterback's timing. And so uh, we got guys that can win one on one like that. It makes it makes life a lot easier. And then I do think that you know, and then Harold gets his one on ones, and then Arden will get his opportunities. And so there's a whole a whole benefit to having two guys inside that can wreck the interior of the pocket. And um, I thought they did a really good job of that on Sunday. Has Ernest Jones mo- earned some more time at the linebacker position after his play against Chicago? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I think that was that was the intent of bringing him on was to uh, solidify that group a little bit that we had been hit with some injuries and uh, a chance to add a player of his caliber and, and a person that has uh, his impact on a locker room as well. Just as a as a former captain and all those things, um, the chance to add him was, was the intent for him to to play, and um, I think you're going to see more of him as as he gets more comfortable. The Jets are the next opponent. Obviously, they're playing Monday night football, so you get one less day to sort of dive in on them. Is that a team you spent some time preparing for in the preseason, knowing that you would have one less day? Yeah, and you know, I think uh, there's a handful of us that have played that. They've got some continuity there, so they've played um, the same, a similar system with coaches there for for a couple of years, and so. Uh, I've, I played him in 21 and 22. My dad played against him in the same years when we crossed over with that division. And so uh, guys got some experience and have seen that system. And so uh, I don't feel behind by any means by not having their first game. Obviously, we don't know what this year's version of their team looks like, but at least schematically we know what their what their DNA is and what their core is. And so I don't uh, don't feel too bad about losing the, the day of preparation. There's plenty of film to get through before – this game tonight how would you describe a Robert Sala defense in terms of your offensive challenge against them um yeah they're they're a fantastic front um Quentin Williams is probably one of the more impact players of the position um so we have our hands full up front they're they're an attacking um, jet style rush front that's going to try to penetrate up the field vertical knockback style front um they got you know one of the best corners in football in, in Sauce Gardner um, their linebackers are experienced and good players. Uh, they, that's a good, that's a very, very, very good defense. Um, we have not uh, been dealt any favors by the, the football gods uh, in our opening games for our offenses with the Bears and then the Jets on deck. Those are two of the better defenses in football. So um, really got a challenge on our hands and, and got to find a way to, to play the same way we played in the first half against Chicago for an entire game. Coach, as we continue through here, we're knocking out firsts for you. So we yeah. got your first game. The more, the, the more of those we can get through, <laughs> the better for first me. First keep yeah. knocking them down. Yeah. The next one is your first home opener at Nissan mm-hmm. Stadium. What are you expecting out of that crowd on Sunday when the Titans take on the Jets? Um, the same thing that we got in Chicago. And, and for those that obviously weren't there, um, that was a fantastic environment for a home team. Um, the energy in the stadium, the excitement that their fan base had that even though that we didn't we didn't come out with a win in the first week, I, I would hope that we have the same sort of enthusiasm and excitement for our team this year because I do. Um, and I think that we have a chance to still be a very good football team. We were competitive in that game and we found a way uh, to not come out on top and we're going to need everything we can get from our fans and that's a huge advantage. You saw the impact it had uh, on, our, on our offense operating. Um, we had some false starts. We had some Timing issues, the clock, it gets loud. The third downs are a big part of it. So um, I'm hoping to see all that. I'm hoping to make it a a really difficult environment for uh, a New York Jets team that has to go out to San Francisco on Monday night and come back out here. They start on the road two straight games, and and hopefully we make it a really difficult environment for them to communicate and operate. I don't know that we could have gotten it across well enough on Titans radio or if Fox could get it across well enough on TV how difficult they made it for you on the last two drives once they got the lead. Uh, communication and everything else was just really, really tough. I'd never seen a Chicago crowd like that. No, and, and we did exactly what I had hoped we'd be able to do in the first part of the game, which is when you when you score on, on a crowd like that, it, it quiets the whole place down. It was We had taken the momentum. Once that crowd gets into it and, and there's – uh, hope in the, in the air, and there's a momentum swing. Um, you've, we felt it. I mean, we felt the the energy impact that the crowd has, and it does. It makes communication really difficult. Uh, it makes 
the quarterback's job operating difficult. We're at a disadvantage in the pass rush because we're on a silent count. And so we're still trying to change up the silent count, but there's that is a defensive advantage um, when we don't have our verbal cadence because it's that loud. And we need that on Sunday. Uh, we need every bit of that. But it was it makes it really difficult to operate on offense. It, you are at a disadvantage on the road when, it, when a crowd is like that. Well, you know these people, from your experience on the other side, you know these people can bring it here. There's no doubt. And that's uh, – <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to most is, <laughs> is seeing is seeing the the, the, the Titans faithful um, really turn it up a notch, you know. And I said it in my opening press conference that that we need that. Our players feed off that. There's an energy and enthusiasm that the stadium feels. And um, if you ask any player, they, they'll tell you that 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 makes a huge difference. Um, and so we need it. And they're they're a part of us. You know, when we win a game, they're a huge part of that process at home because uh, you have an environment that's difficult to play in. It makes uh, it makes the home field advantage a real thing. And, and I know they're going to bring it, and we're going to need every bit of their support this Sunday as well. Attention Titans fans, are you looking to unlock the power of your home equity? Wesley Mortgage is here to help with their amazing home equity line of credit, or HELOC options. With a HELOC from Wesley Mortgage, you can access the funds you need for home improvements, debt consolidation, or even that dream vacation. Plus, with flexible terms and competitive rates, it's easier than ever to achieve your financial goals. Visit wesleymortgage.com today to learn more and get started. That's wesleymortgage.com. Wesley Mortgage, where your home's equity works for you. Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. SeatGeek. <laughs> Thank you so much, Coach. We appreciate you. That's going to do it for this edition of the OTP. For Brian Callahan and also Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for joining us for the OTP.